Good evening. I'm so glad you, you came back for our part two of the signs of the end times. I've had, I've had several requests from people answering questions about, about the signs of the end times and if this virus that we're dealing with could be part of it. And yes, it could. But there could be more viruses as well coming. And there always have been. But signs of the end times, I'd like for you to have your Bibles open. And I will uh, be reading to you a lot from Daniel 9, 2 Peter 3, and Revelation chapter 6. Lord, I pray that you will give me wisdom, words, the strength, Lord, to teach this lesson to these people who are so faithful tuning in on a Wednesday night, prayer, prayer meeting night, Lord, asking you, Lord, to bless this lesson to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Last Sunday night, we talked about signs of the end times. The first one was the deceivers, the liars. There will be so many, and they'll be, they'll be directing us to Christ in so many ways. And we were warned not to believe them, not to trust them. Now we, we start this message in Matthew 24, starting in verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? and the sign of the end of the world. Jesus answered them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Last Sunday night's message. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. But verse 6, we have new material. We have a new symptom of the end of time the signs of the times. And it simply says this, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. There's always been wars. There always will be wars. As long as there are men in countries and nations that aren't satisfied with what they have and that they want what others have their land, their property, their oil, whatever it is. There are always wars. But we're speaking here of a, of, of a time when Antichrist, Armageddon, the last war against Christ. And it says here, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be this. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will always be wars. Don't let it trouble you. Israel only had one short period of time of peace. The Bible speaks here in the near future, Antichrist is going to make a pact with Israel to give them seven years of peace. That's a promise. A worldwide ruler, global economist, is going to promise Israel seven years of peace. And who knows what he gets for that. But he's going to promise them seven years worth of peace. And then in the middle of that, seven years, he's going to break the treaty. Watch this, Daniel 9, 27. He, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That week is a week of years, seven years. And in the middle of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblations to cease. 
He will interrupt the worship of God in the temple. For the, that seven-year period, he will have promised you can worship God Jehovah your way. But then he's going to interrupt. Israel's only time of peace is in the near future, and she needs to be aware that it will be a short peace. In verse 6, it, spoke, it speaks of wars. When there are wars and rumors of wars, there is a need of constant care to keep worries from entering into our hearts, to keep worries from stealing our peace. Wars are necessary in order for the end to come. There are certain things that have to happen for the end to come. We should be rejoicing sometimes when these things happen because we're getting one step, two steps, three steps closer to God. Wow, to the end times. In times of war, in these times, I make a suggestion to you. Please let me make a suggestion to you. Limit your time on the television. Limit your time on the television. Limit your news intake and read more of your Bible. Less news, more Bible. Just gives you more peace. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, it said in verse 6. We must not be troubled for two reasons. How can you say that? For two reasons I'm going to say it. One... Because we're told to expect it. It should be part of our expectations. It shouldn't surprise us when God tells us what is going to happen. And then it happens, let it not trouble you. War is necessary to bring in the end times. Let it not trouble you. Stay in your Bible and limit your news intake. I said I had two reasons why we must not be troubled. Number two is because we are told to expect more of the same. That these are only the beginning of sorrows. Wow. Since this is true, an overriding law for Christians is what manner, what kind of persons all you to be in all holy conversation. Word conversation means lifestyle. What kind of person ought you to be in lifestyle and in your godliness? Now, this word godliness is a neat word. It is the ability to act or react as Jesus would. What does that verse say again? Because of wars and rumors of wars, don't worry. But they're going to come. But what kind of person ought we to be in all holy lifestyle and godliness? I'll leave that with you for a moment since all this is true. Next in verse 7, we see, And there shall be famines, a lack of food. During times of war, there is a lack of food. Food becomes scarce. Revelation Chapter 6, verse 5 says this, When he had opened the third seal, I heard, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld a low, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. Literally, we're speaking of here, we're speaking of here, in, to equate it to now, from then, we, we speak of to buy a loaf of bread, a day's wages. That's how, that's how uh, much food will be scarce. I remember when my wife and I moved because of the Navy, we moved to Spain and 20 years earlier, they had had a famine. 
And the people were eating the grass. They were eating the bark. Every bug and every, every pet they could find got eaten. You do a lot of terrible things when you or your children are hungry. We read of a famine in Judea. Not long after Christ's time in Acts chapter eleven twenty eight, 28, and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there would be a great famine throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. The worst famine in history mentioned in the Bible, Lamentations 4, 9 and 10. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for lack of fruits of the field. Verse 10, And the hands of the pitiful women have sodden. I don't want to speak more on that, but they have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction. There have been horrendous famines and the results of famines. It, famine, worldwide famine, will be a sign of the end times. And because of that, what kind of persons should we be? in all holy conversation, lifestyle, and in godliness, what, what should we be? How shall we be? How should we act? How shall we live? Godliness in that verse, speaking of being able to act like Jesus would. Holy conversation, living a lifestyle that would be like Jesus would. In verse 7, we come down to it now. Pestilence, pestilence. In verse 7, Matthew 24, 7, he says, and pestilences, pestilences are plagues. They're coronaviruses or worse. We've had some terrible ones, and this is one more. Whether or not this is the one that will bring us into the end times or not, but as long as God knows, I'm okay. Yes, it's a terrible thing, but God knows. He knows. Watch this. In Revelation 6, 7, And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Oh my goodness, the beast of the earth. At that time, whoever is left on the earth, one-fourth of them are going to die. That number... That number, our numbers of death right now dwarf what that would be. One-fourth of the world, billions of people will die during this, this plague. During this plague. Read it with me again. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see, I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And power was given unto them, this pale horse, over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. The black death of the middle centuries, the bubonic plague, was literally caused by the beast of the earth, the rat. The rat is the most dangerous animal on the face of the earth. During times of famine, the food we do have gets infiltrated by the rats. And the rats leave their droppings. And that causes, that causes disease and death by the beast of the earth. 
You understand that even now, some are saying that our coronavirus was caused by the bat. It's just incredible. It's incredible what we, what we actually don't know about what's coming. Bubonic plagues, coronaviruses, the rats, the bats. They say that scientists can have a cube of sugar and put the, put the death into it, put disease into it, and that one little square cube of sugar could kill millions if it was set loose in society. Yes, pestilences and plagues are a sign of the end times. Whether or not we're at that point there or not, I fear that our enemies have learned how to disrupt our world, that there might be more coming, more plagues coming. Remembering that. Remembering what, again, what kind of persons ought we to be in lifestyle and in godliness. Listen, things are not going to go on constantly like they are now. Things are going to change. What kind of person ought we to be if the Holy Scriptures are to come true? Verse 7 also speaks of earthquakes. He says, and earthquakes in diverse places. History records that up to the 19th century, up to the beginning of the 20th century, there were 10 to 12 major earthquakes per century. Over 100 earthquakes have been recorded in the last 100 years, more than 10 times. Over 50 major earthquakes have been reported in the past 40 years. The earth is violently changing. Earthquakes, part of, part of the end times. Wow. And since this is true, then what kind of persons ought we to be in all holy lifestyle and godliness? I want to move on to verse 8. Matthew 24, 8, martyrdom is a sign. Martyrdom is a sign of the end times. And I need you to realize you're very protected. What goes on in third world countries doesn't always get reported in our papers. They look right past that. But there are millions of people being persecuted, if not martyred, for the cause of Christ alone. Martyrdom, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. There will be purges. There will be rewards. Even in China, they put a reward system out. Report your neighbor if they break the rules. Wow, martyrdom. It is the cause, though, that makes the martyr, and the cause comforts him. There are many that have, there are many that will give their life, burn their bodies, 1 Corinthians 13, will burn their bodies uh, for, for the cause, but if it's not the right cause. There are those that are so committed to, to their ideology, they will strap bombs on them, but this martyrdom is a martyrdom for Christ. And in these last days, they might even place a gun at your head and say, reject Christ, renounce him. If not, they will martyr you. It was for Christ's sake that we will be hated. Our professing and preaching his name will fire up the nations so much against him. Don't take it personal. It's not you they will hate. It's your Christ they will hate. Since this is true, 
what manner of persons ought we to be in all lifestyle and in godliness? Wow. Rough times ahead. But as long as we are in the hands of God, we're protected. Put yourself into the hands of God during these, these hard times. Realizing, recognizing he's there at your side. Realizing he knows it. Realizing that he's everywhere. Keep yourself in the hand of God. He will provide. He will protect you. Would you bow your heads wherever you're at for a word of prayer? Would you at this very moment with all these terrible things coming up, if not now, later, but what kind of person ought you to be in all manner of lifestyle? What kind should you be? Should you be, should you be able to choose your own lifestyle? Should you be able to choose your own special sins and pleasures? Or is there an expectation God has on us to live godliness, godly, holy lives, and to try to have an effect on all those around us, being useful while we're here to the kingdom of God? Lord Jesus Christ, Help us then now, Lord, see what you see, know what you know, and then, Lord, to be useful. Lord, help us to become the people you want us to be. Help us, Lord, teach us, Lord. Be patient, but, Lord, use us in mighty ways in these end times. If these aren't the end times, there are end times, Lord. Use us, Lord, and use these factors we've been speaking of to help us reach others. For it's in Jesus' name.